The whole package flew practically to the heel. How American HIMARS are fighting in Ukraine. The special use of US HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems has impressed both Russians and Ukrainians. Ukrainian Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov has already stated that high precision systems have changed the rules of the game and, quote, the first four HIMARS that Ukraine received from partner countries inflict more damage on the enemy than the classic time tested 152 caliber cannons. According to official statements as well as media publications, three systems across the bridge in Kherson, which became inoperable as a result, destroyed Russian weapon depots and headquarters in Melitopol, Svatov, Izium, Paravalsk, Stankinov, Novaya Kokovka, Donetsk, and Snezny. The Pentagon stated that we are watching the Ukrainians' use of HIMARS and we see that they've had considerable success in their use. So why is this weapon capable of turning the tide of the war, as many experts believe? The M142 HIMARS, High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, is a relatively new weapon system. Lockheed Martin began its development in 1994. Production started in 2003. Ideologically, it's a classic mobile multiple rocket launcher system based on three-axle wheeled chassis FMTV, which allows airlifting by C-130 Hercules transport aircraft. So moving these weapons thousands of miles away in a few hours is no problem. HIMARS is the little brother of the M270A1 MLRS multiple launch rocket system. The latter is Caterpillar mounted and has twice as much ammunition. The HIMARS has six missiles, while the M270A1 MLRS has 12 missiles. Wheeled, it can travel up to 55 miles per hour on the road. The high level of automation enables the HIMARS to move from transport to firing position or from firing position to transport in just 16 seconds. This allows the HIMARS to avoid retaliation. High mobility is also provided by the design of the HIMARS. All its six missiles are in a special launch container which is loaded at the factory. They're installed by a crane which is part of the vehicle. Therefore, it takes five minutes to reload the ammunition. Such a system of loading is much better than the Russian analogous systems. In them, each missile has to be inserted into rails with the help of a special transport loading machine and it takes more than 30 minutes to reload. The range of the HIMARS depends on the type of ammunition used. The standard load currently used by the Ukrainian army involves launching six M30 or M31 GLMRS 8.9-inch guided missiles with a maximum range of 37 to 49 miles. The unitary fragmentation warhead weighs 200 pounds. The closest counterparts are the Soviet Russian 9K58 Smirch and the Russian 9K515 Tornado S, an 11.8-inch caliber with a range of 75 miles and a warhead weight of 290 pounds. It would seem that the HIMARS is inferior to the Russian Tornado in both range and charge capacity, but there's another very important factor – accuracy. For the HIMARS, the deviation from the target is no more than 7 feet. The missile is guided by GPS. There's no need to illuminate the target with a laser beam. Russian weapons have a much greater dispersion. Russian war correspondent Roman Sapankov, who has covered this Russian-Ukrainian war, confessed the whole package from HIMARS, five or six missiles, came almost in the nickel. Normally, MLRSs are laid down in areas, and at the maximum range they fly apart in a fan. When I was on a trip later in the day, and on the way, they laid down cluster hurricanes about 500 meters away. Spread over a large area, unexploded piglets were left sticking out in the fields. It's officially stated that the unguided missiles of the Russian tornado make up 0.3% of its range. That is, at a range of 80 kilometers, it'll be 240 meters. Hence the terrible destruction caused by the Russian troops to civilian objects. The high accuracy of the HIMARS is eloquently demonstrated by photos of the damage to the Antonov Bridge in Kherson. As you can see, the damage to the canvas is literally just a few steps away from each other. But you can tell the Russians have a very strong air defense system. For example, the S-400 anti-aircraft missile system has become a real sales hit. It was even bought by the NATO country Turkey. This is all true, but HIMARS have demonstrated the ability to break through the Russian air defense system. Usually, a tried-and-true tactic is used, several volleys of cheaper Urigan MLRSs are fired at the chosen target. 
which the Russian SAMs discharge, and then the HIMARS strike. Their actions are also accompanied by the work of American electronic warfare systems. Clear proof of the effectiveness of this tactic in front of you is the inoperable Antonov Bridge, which the Russians defend very carefully with air defenses because of its strategic importance. It and the Kakovskaya HPP Dam are the only bridges over the Dnieper that are controlled by the Russians. The extremely high-precision missiles fired by the Ukrainian army help minimize collateral damage in long-range attacks against Russian targets placed close to civilian objects. Also, military experts are already joking that the worst position in the Russian army right now is that of an ammunition loader in a logistics depot. This also has a psychological impact. Much more of the invading Russian forces now fall within attack radius. They personally see the impact of HIMARS on social media and understand what'll happen to them. Thanks to a unified fuse, HIMARS missiles can hit a wide class of targets. For example, by setting the fuse to airburst, infantry can be destroyed. To destroy a protective structure, the missile must explode inside it, so the fuse is set to a delayed explosion. To destroy an armored target, the fuse is set to a contact explosion. The Ukrainian army can now conduct strikes that were previously inaccessible due to Russian air defense systems. This allows Ukraine to fight the way it wants to, rather than with grueling battles as the Russian armed forces prefer. Therefore, HIMARS is now at the top of the list of targets for Russian missiles and aircraft. Let's be honest, the Russians seem to have destroyed several HIMARS, although the Ukrainian side denies it. There is a video on the internet that the Russian army claims filmed the destruction of one HIMARS, but it was destroyed only because the Russians were able to track down their storage sites. But the destruction of Russian headquarters and depots in the rear continues. Can the HIMARS change the balance of power on the front and force the Russian army to retreat? No, it can't. At least not yet. Despite its effective use, the HIMARS is not a miracle weapon that will change the course of the war. Since the first industrial revolution, there's been a tendency to look for a single technological miracle that will help win wars. But it's a mirage. The HIMARS alone will not allow Ukraine to win the war. U.S. HIMARS are the long arm to attack the Russian armed forces, but it's not enough. The effectiveness of these missiles is minimized in relatively simple ways primarily by dispersing the targets that can be hit by these missiles. But most importantly, there are very few of them. Now the Ukrainian army has about 8 to 12 such installations. In addition, Germany, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and Norway promised to supply 18 MLRS, but so far, they've not been seen in Ukraine. Alexei Danilov, Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, said that dozens more such launchers are needed. But in any case, HIMARS and MLRS can inflict painful losses and even slow down the advance of Russian troops in certain directions at the expense of shell shortages and disorganization due to the destruction of headquarters, but no more than that. A comprehensive approach is needed to win. Therefore, the West must continue to supply arms, ammunition, intelligence, training of the AFU fighters, and all other forms of support that Ukraine needs. Then Ukraine will win and along with it, the entire civilized world will win. Otherwise, the West will degrade and lose its global hegemony. And what do you think? Will Ukraine be able to defeat the Russian bear? And what does it need to do so? Write about it in the comments below. Please also don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel. There will be more interesting videos about modern armaments.